This one is Feb March 17, paper 4, variant 2, the second uh, part. Iron is extracted from its ore using a blast furnace. Explain how, how this carbon dioxide converting to carbon monoxide. So in the blast furnace, how carbon dioxide is converted into carbon monoxide, it reacts with more carbon. So it reacts with coke, you can also say. Calcium carbonate is added in a blast furnace, decomposed to form calcium oxide. Calcium oxide removes silicon four oxide. Write a chemical equation for calcium oxide and suggest why it is a neutralization. So calcium oxide reacted with silicon oxide to form slag, calcium silicate, CaSiO3. Why we call this as a neutralization? Because calcium oxide is a metal oxide or a basic oxide. And silicon oxide is a non-metal oxide or acidic oxide. So when acid reacts with base or acidic oxide reacts with base, we call neutralization. The main impurity in iron obtained from the blast furnace is carbon. Why must the high level of a carbon be lowered before iron becomes useful material? Because if we have high percentage of the carbon, uh, then it will be a brittle, like it can uh, not, the layers cannot slide over each other. Pure iron is highly malleable, but if it is having more carbon, it will be less malleable or more brittle. So the malleability decrease as the percentage of the carbon increases. So we cannot deform the carbon easily or we can say it is more brittle when it is having a high percentage of carbon. How carbon is removed from the iron? So we use a basic oxygen furnace for that. So it reacts with oxygen. In a basic oxygen furnace, Zinc is extracted from its ore. The ore contains zinc sulfide. Uh, give the name of a zinc, ore of a zinc that contains zinc sulfide. So that is zinc blend. Right equation for conversion of a zinc sulfide roasted in air. So when it is uh, roasted in air, so we have zinc sulfide, it reacts with oxygen. It will form zinc oxide plus sulfur. Dioxide. But the equation must be balanced. The so two zinc sulfide, three oxygen gives uh, two zinc oxide and two sulfur dioxide. So why sulfur dioxide should not be released into the atmosphere? So it is a greenhouse. It is uh, can cause an acid rain. Acidic oxide can cause acid rain. That's why we should not release to the atmosphere. And it's of two marks. So We have to mention at least two. So can cause acid rain, form acid rain, and can damage the building work or the stone work. Then the temperature inside a blast furnace in which a zinc is extracted is about 1000. Use the data in the table, why zinc obtained does not contain high level of impurities because the temperature is 1000. So what will the state of zinc at 1000 degree? It will be a gas. So the temperature of the furnace is above the boiling point of a zinc. So it will vaporize. That's why it does not contain impurity. Uh, the temperature is higher than the boiling point. So it vaporizes or boiled and it does not contain impurities. That's why the impurities remain there in the furnace and the zinc is removed in the form of vapor. So this question is related to molds. Barium carbonate decomposed when heated. A student heated 10 gram of sample of a barium carbonate until it was fully decomposed. Calculate the number of molds. So the formula will use molds equal mass in gram divided by molar mass. So mass in gram, 10 gram, and molar mass of a barium carbonate. So we have to use a periodic table for this. At the end of the paper, you will find a periodic table. So here is a barium 137. Carbon is 12 and oxygen is 16. 
So moles equal mass in gram, which was 10 divided by 137 plus carbon is 12 plus oxygen 16 multiplied by 3 is 48 plus 12 60, 60 plus 137, that is 197. So 10 divided by 197. Uh, this will give us the mold of barium carbonate. So that is 0 0.05. Then calculate the volume of a carbon dioxide gas produced at a room temperature. So first we take the ratio between, because first we use a formula, then we'll for, use a ratio and then formula. So the ratio is one is to one. So barium carbonate and carbon dioxide ratio is one is to one. So same number of moles will be there. If this is 0 0.05, then this will be X cross multiplied. So we'll get the same mole 0 0.05. But we need the volume. As in the question they mentioned. So when we decompose 10 gram. So 0, 0 0.0 barium uh, carbonate was there. We got the barium carbonate 10 divided by the molar mass. And then use a ratio. We got the moles. 1 is to 1 is the ratio. And then to get the volume of a carbon dioxide, so moles equal volume divided by 24. So if we need volume, it is moles 0 0.05 multiplied by 24 will give us the volume of a gas, which is 1.22 decimeter cube. The next part, student, add two grams of barium oxide produce, uh, produce a student added two grams of barium oxide produced to water. Like the first this barium oxide, which is produced, student added to water. Calculate the mass of a barium hydroxide that can be made from two grams of barium oxide. The molar mass of a barium hydroxide is 170. So first we'll find, you can take the ratio of the mass or you can first find the moles. We have two grams of barium oxide. So first we'll find the moles of barium oxide the moles equal mass in gram divided by molar mass. What is the molar mass of a barium oxide? Barium is 137 plus oxygen is 16. So it will be 153. So 2 divided by 153. This will give us the moles of the barium hydroxide. Uh, sorry, barium oxide. And using those moles, we can work out the mass of barium hydroxide, that is one way. There's also another way. If mass is given, you can take the ratio of the mass. Like the total mass of a barium oxide and the total mass of barium hydroxide according to equation. Because one mole is there, so that is 153. And barium hydroxide, the molar mass, one mole is there, 171. That is given. So if the 153 is 171, so if it is 2, then this will be x. So what we do, we cross multiply. So you can, if mass is given, you can take the ratio of the mass to work out the mole. So this will give us 2.24 grams of barium hydroxide. In part C, 1.5 gram of a sample of a barium hydroxide was dissolved in water. The total volume uh, of a solution is 100. 25 cm cube portion of barium hydroxide was titrated. Calculate how many moles are there were there in 25 cm cube portion. So, how to work out the total number of the moles? We have the formula moles equal uh, mass in gram divided by molar mass. So mass in gram is 1.50 and the molar mass of a barium hydroxide is 171. So we'll get the moles uh, 1.5 divided by uh, 171, so 0 0.002. And then concentration. So first we, to get the concentration, concentration is moles multiplied by volume. So it's moles divided by volume. So the concentration most divided by volume. So we, we first take a ratio between barium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid to get the moles of hydrochloric acid. So ratio is one is to two. 
So if you have 0 0.002, then this will be x cross multiply. It will be 0 0.004 will be there. These are the moles. And the volume of hydrochloric acid. So 0 0.002 moles are there. Then the, the ratio is 1 is to 2. So we'll have these are the moles. So 0 0.004 divided by volume. What volume of hydrochloric acid was used? 18.75 cm cube, but that should be in dm cube. So we divide by 1000, so 0 0.01875. So this will be 0 0.01875. So when we divide, we'll get the concentration, which is 0 0.24, uh, 0 0.23 moles per dm cube. So using the moles and the volume, we can work out the concentration. The last question from this paper, the diagram shows a part of a structure of addition polymer, draw a circle around one repeat unit. So if we just take the first two carbons and circle around them, that is a one repeat unit. Draw a structure of a monomer. So you just take the first two carbon, draw the structure as it is, and monomer in addition polymer should have a double bond, so there will be a carbon-carbon double bond. Aqueous bromine is added to both polymer and monomer. Polymer does not contain a carbon-carbon double bond, so there will be no reaction with aqueous bromine, but monomer contain a carbon-carbon double bond, so yes, it will react. And as a result, describe what is seen with the polymer, there is no change, but with monomer, it will decolorize. The diagram shows a part of the structure of condensation polymer. What type of condensation polymer is this? So you can identify from the link, it contains amide or a peptide link, linkage. So basically dicarboxylic acid react with diamine, so that is nylon. So this is a structure of a nylon. If it was having one side carboxylic group, one side amines, then it will be protein. On the diagram circle, one repeat unit, So we have to circle the one repeat unit for this. So this is the one unit. And this one is the second unit. Draw a structure of a monomer which has a condensation. Draw, uh, draw the structure of two monomers from which condensation polymer is made. So. How this condensation polymer is made? Basically, it is formed by dicarboxylic acid and diode. So, uh, diamine. So, dicarboxylic acid. The shaded box that is dicarboxylic acid and the diamine is there, which result to form this polymer. Then hydrolysis of the polymer gave a compound with a formula uh, with the following composition. Calculate the empirical formula. So we have carbon, we have hydrogen and oxygen. This one is 34.61. This one is 3.85. And this one is 61.54. The first step to find the empirical formula, we divide by atomic mass. So the carbon we divide by 12. For hydrogen, we divide by 1. For oxygen, we divide by 16. So this will come out as 2.885. This will remain as 3.85. And this one will be, when we divide, it is 3.85. Then what we do, we divide it by smallest value in the combination, which is 2.88. So we divide all of them by 2.88. This will be one, this is 1.33. This is also 1.33. So whenever one of the values 1.33, what we do, we multiply all of them by three. So we multiply this by three. So when we multiply all of them by three, this will be three, this will be four and four. So empirical formula C3, H4, 
O4. Then what additional information we need to get the molecular formula? So molecular formula equals empirical formula times N. And what is N? N is a molecular mass divided by empirical mass. So what we need, we have empirical formula, we will have empirical mass, so we need a molecular mass. So additional information, what we need, we need a molecular mass to get the molecular formula. 